First of all, what's a commentary function? It's a function that takes two arguments, the current scores for player 0 and player 1, usually prints some stuff, and then returns another commentary function. So I'm not going to write Python code. I'm just going to write a commentary function to show you that this thing that gets returned might be f or it might not be f. It's some function that also takes score 0 and score 1 and prints something. So commentary functions need to exist. You'll write one in question 7. You'll write one in question 6. Um, there's a couple that are provided for you in the text. And then you need to implement play. And play actually takes as arguments score 0 and score 1, which start out at 0. And then it also takes a commentary function called say. And the body of play you've probably discovered by now if you're watching this video is going to have while and then some code to simulate a turn. And then here, you're supposed to add something new as part of question 6. You're supposed to call the say function in on score 0 and score 1. In particular, it says say score 0, score 1 should be called at the end of the first turn. So here we are at the end of the first turn. We're going to call say score 0, score 1. Now, how do these things get connected together? If f is a commentary function and play is the function you've defined to simulate the game, and it takes as an argument the commentary function, then somewhere in the program, play must get called. And it must get called on the score 0 and score 1 initial values, and then it must be called with this commentary function. So the reason say gets bound to a commentary function is because there's some call expression somewhere. This exists in tests and the GUI, but not in hog.py. But eventually, play and your commentary function will get tied together with a call expression that looks something like this. So let's look at the directions for question 6 really quickly. At the end of the first turn, we're supposed to call say score 0, score 1. Its return value, which is another commentary function, should be called at the end of the second turn. So what I'd recommend, if you're stuck on how this is supposed to work, is to run a little thought experiment. Pretend that you didn't have a while statement at all. And instead of writing code to simulate an arbitrary turn, then we'd write some code to simulate turn 1. And then we'd say what's going on. And then we write some code to simulate turn 2, and some code to simulate turn 3, and some code to simulate turn 4, etc. So we never write play like this. Instead, we write a while statement because we don't know how many turns there are. But imagine you could write it this way. And it's what's important here is that say score 0, score 1 happens at the end of the first turn. Its return value, another commentary function, should be called at the end of the second turn. Let me just highlight another commentary function should be called at the end of the second term and say that there should be some other function, which is a commentary function, which means it takes the arguments score 0 and score 1, and it should be called at the end of the second term. And maybe there's some other one called at the end of the third term. Each turn, a new commentary function should be called that is the return value of the previous call to a commentary function. OK, so the problem so far is that h doesn't refer to anything. And so this code wouldn't work. I mean, obviously it wouldn't work. I've left out all these details. But even code of this structure wouldn't work, because I have to say what h is before I can use it. And the really important thing for you to determine is how you give a name to the function that should be called at the end of the second turn. It's the return value of calling say score 0, score 1. So here's an expression that calls say, and this thing returns something. What do I do with a return value? Well, if I want to use it later, I could imagine returning it, but that would end the play function. So maybe that's not right. I could imagine calling it immediately. 
But it's not time to call it yet. I still have to simulate turn two. So the only option I have remaining is to give it a name and then call the function named h later on. So this says call say, get its return value, give it a name, and later on we're going to call that return value on some other scores. Now these might look like the same scores, but they've probably changed because of turn two. Now your challenge in solving problem six is to figure out how to get this same structure to work where we uh, get the function for turn two here, and then we call it here to get the function for turn three, and then we call it here, and maybe we need to get the function for turn four, and then we call that, etc. This kind of structure where we're always getting a name for the return value and then calling that later could be part of the original while statement, which I pretended wasn't there. You'll have to figure out how to make that happen. Okay, so that's part of problem six. Another part of problem six is that you're supposed to implement both. Somewhere in your code it says def both. I'm not going to tell you how to do it. Instead, I'll tell you how to implement something similar. I'm going to write a function called turn. And what it does is return a commentary function that prints out the turn number. How would I call it? Well, I'd get the commentary function itself by saying turn one. And the point is, when I call f on whatever scores, it's going to print out turn one. And when I call its return value on whatever scores, it's going to tell me now I'm on turn two. How do I write such a function? Well, turn is not a commentary function. Instead, say is a commentary function. I could call it whatever I want, but I'll call it say. That's a good name. I'm going to have it print out the current turn. Whenever I define an inner function and my goal is to return it, I have to write a return statement where this name matches that name. And this could be anything. As long as this name matches this name, we're fine. Now, this is supposed to be a commentary function, but it's not because it doesn't look like a commentary function. It has no return statement. This needs to return the function that should be called at the end of turn two. So here's the function that should be called at the end of turn one and print out turn one. In order to get the function that should be called at the end of turn two, I call turn on two. If I want this logic to happen generally, I should call turn on n plus one. This sets n in the subsequent call to turn to be two and then returns a function that prints out turn two. And if we kept going, and we called h on some other scores, then it would print out turn three. And that's really good because we want this thing to tell us what turn we're on. Let's extend turn a little bit. Let's have it return a commentary function that prints out the turn number and then says whatever f says for commentary function f. And that means we're going to have to add an argument f, which is some other commentary function. And we're going to have to figure out how to get f to say whatever f says. Since f is a commentary function, the only way to get it to print out what it's supposed to print is to call it. So I have to call it. Everything looks fine here. Turn one f. I say anything by taking score zero and score one, printing out the turn number. But then here I need to call f. I've left out two important things, and here's how you'll need to solve the problem from here. You need to figure out what arguments f takes. I'll give you a hint. It's always the same for every commentary function. You'll have to think about what you should do with the return value for f. And you should think about what you call turn on in order to match its signature. So notice in this case that turn takes two arguments, and here we've only passed in one. 
We need to write something there. And let me tell you how everything fits together. Turn returns the function to be called at the end of turn one. F is a function to be called at the end of turn one. So that's great. We're calling F at the end of turn one. The commentary function that I should return here should be the function that is meant to be called at the end of turn two, which is why we pass in two as n. And we need to pass in the function that says whatever f would say at the end of turn two as its second argument. OK, so if you could fill this in, and feel free to have a conversation about it or talk about it on Piazza, then I'll bet you could complete both. And I think it's fine for you to discuss the implementation of turn, since it's not one of the required problems for the project. You could even share code about how to implement it correctly. What you shouldn't be sharing code about is how to implement this, but this is pretty similar to that, and so it should get you started. One really important point here is that I didn't reassign n. I didn't say n equals n plus 1. Instead, I used a different mechanism to bind n to n plus 1. I called turn on n plus 1. And when you call a function, you're binding its formal parameter n to n plus 1. Now, I'm doing it in a different environment, and that's handy because that means that there's no confusion between the old n and the new n. I hope that guide helps you get started on question six so you can move on with the rest of the project.